Welcome back to another great session of the Conversational AI Fest. This time, Yannick Van Altena, the product owner of Bui at Bold.com. Uh, for those who don't know, Bold.com uh, is one of the biggest e-commerce businesses in the Benelux area. He will share with us the learnings that he had for the past 14 years of having the uh, Billy the Bot alive. <laughs> alive. So Yannick, welcome to the Conversational AI Fest. I'm really happy to have you here. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you. I'm actually, I'm personally looking forward uh, for your uh, presentation and for your learnings about Billy. So please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, let's get started. Um, in uh, this uh, talk, uh, well, let me just uh, first introduce myself. So I will be talking about 14 years of chatbot Billy. Um, how is it possible that it's been existing this long? And what have we learned in that time? Um, as said before, bulb.com uh, or bulb.com or however you want to say it uh, in your language um, is an e-commerce uh, store. Um, we're currently uh, very good at holding up Amazon in the Benelux, so it's uh, a good uh, place uh, to be. Um, I am the product owner of uh, Billy, uh, the chatbot, which is part of our online service department. I've been at uh, bulb.com for two and a half years. And if you have any questions at the end or you want to ask me anything, say uh, uh, something to me, feel free to do so. You can find me on LinkedIn. So let's uh, drive, let's uh, get into it. Uh, how is it possible that Bulb.com has a 14 year old chatbot? Um, this uh, question uh, triggered uh, for me because 53% um, uh, of all chatbots. Uh, is not accessible anymore after 15 months, uh, so uh, research shows. Um, and this is a fascinating uh, statistic to me. Um, and uh, previously also, I was a consultant before I worked at uh, Bold.com. Um, and as a consultant, I came to many places and uh, there um, they said, uh, let's uh, not uh, talk about, uh, uh, let's not call it chatbot, we call it virtual agent or virtual assistant or uh, 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 something like that, uh, because there was a project previously already going on and that it didn't go too well. Um, and also whenever I went somewhere, I Googled uh, the place and uh, added the word chatbot and see what came up. And usually you found a funeral of uh, press releases um, of uh, chatbots having existed and disappearing. So learning that uh, a Bold.com chatbot uh, exists for already 14 years, that's amazing. Uh, and uh, I was very surprised, so I decided to dive into that and see how is this po how is this possible. Um, if any of you know chatbots that are older than 14 years old and still functioning at scale, uh, please let me know. I'm searching for them. I haven't found it yet, and I'd like to learn from them. Uh, but uh, before uh, we go into that, uh, I'd like to uh, learn from you. Um, by the way, uh, this statistic on the screen. Uh, is it uh, recognizable for uh, people in uh, the chat? Uh, because this is from research, but I'm very curious. Uh, do you experience this as well? If you uh, recognize this, please uh, type uh, something in the, in the comments or in the chat. Uh, I'm very curious. Uh, in the meantime, I will continue. So um, I've uh, worked at uh, Bold.com for two and a half years now, um, uh, of which one and a half year as BO, and I had a search for that. Um, how did it start? What were the challenges in the past 14 years? What were the victories in the past 14 years? And what uh, changes uh, uh, have been made uh, to make sure that everything uh, still works and functions? Um, of course, this is not just my story. There are four core figures, um, uh, Diana, Fabian, Elmer, and Daryl, um, all uh, uh, very present. So the first one uh, is, uh, uh, yeah, was uh, at Ball since 1998, was involved in the start of uh, everything uh, chatbot and the customer service. Um, then there's uh, uh, Fabian, uh, who is uh, uh, a, a full from a company that's a full service uh, chatbot provider. So they also write the content and uh, they uh, uh, did uh, the largest part of the past 14 years of chatbots. Um, uh, before uh, uh, we started uh, migrating to chat layer. Um, so uh, part of this is also his story. Then there's Elmer, my manager, who's been uh, at Paul since 2015. 
and uh, there's their uh, developer who is, uh, was there since the beginning. And this is uh, their story. Um, and it uh, all starts in 1999. Um, that's when uh, our company was founded, 26 employees, a couple of very successful commercial campaigns, no chatbots, uh, no Billy, but the predecessors of Billy, Billy's character. And they were in those uh, commercial campaigns. Uh, so uh, there's a short video. Ah, welcome back, Bol. Loopt u mee? Dan rijd ik u even rond. De telefonistes van Bol, dames. Bol is een nieuw bedrijf dat Bol staat van de dealer. Well, I won't uh, show the full thing. Uh, most of it was in Dutch as well, so it is not uh, too relevant for everyone. But here you can already see the. Uh, uh, yeah, as it uh, was sometimes called, uh, the fat man uh, of Bol.com. Bol is uh, also, uh, uh, yeah, how do you say it, round uh, in uh, Dutch. Um, so uh, that's where the character comes from. So in 2004, uh, Bol decided to stop with uh, the, the fat man. It uh, was a 90s thing, uh, didn't fit uh, our image anymore. So we decided to change things. But then in 2006, uh, the Billy character was born because Customers still associate Ball with the old advertisements. Um, Billy was created, appeared in commercials ah, and everything. That was you. I'll skip this one for now, but at the end he uh, appeared in uh, 3D. Um, and uh, that was uh, just because uh, customers really, really wanted it and associated it. And even after two years of uh, no commercials, uh, it still showed up. So in uh, 2008, uh, the idea was to start with uh, a chatbot. Uh, there, at that point, there were less than 200 people at Bolt.com. Uh, Fabian of Life Presence uh, sent an email with a lot of bravado, and he said, we're going to make you great with your chatbot. Okay, well, uh, by now, probably most of you have heard something this, like this before, but back then it was uh, pretty new. And why was it interesting? Um, it was not the first provider uh, that uh, Bolt.com uh, talked to, uh, but it was the first with uh, actual dialogue. So that means that you could have a conversation. It's not just question answer. Uh, uh, combination. Uh, it was a small, highly entrepreneurial and flexible company, and even their technical brain sat at the table to talk with us. Um, maybe that sounds familiar to you because we had the same feeling with uh, ChatLayer, and that's uh, in the end why we also chose for ChatLayer. Uh, so learning number one, find a partner that suits you as a company. And for us, it didn't suit to go with uh, the uh, extremely large uh, uh, multinationals uh, because we felt that we were a number in that sense. And here we could actually sit at the table and talk with each other. So then we went live. Apologies, I see I uh, forgot to translate something. Uh, on the 4th of December 2008, one line of JavaScript uh, just loaded uh, in, even though we had 25 developers at the time. Uh, no technical links. We only uh, observed customers uh, and wrote uh, conversations based on that. It was a lot simpler than today. You ordered something on Friday, you got it on Monday. Uh, nowadays, you have way more delivery options. So our content was relatively doable. Uh, there was no customer research, but it was still very personal. Um, the first name was Chatbot uh, until um, uh, just, uh, our marketing department said, no, you have to call it Billy because that's what people really, really like, uh, which uh, in the end was a genius move because that made the adoption uh, way easier. Um, and uh, that's uh, how it went live on the 4th of December 2008. So if you're Dutch, you might recognize this. As one day before a giant holiday uh, called uh, Sinterklaas or Saint Nicholas, um, which is uh, the Dutch version of uh, Christmas, you could say. Uh, we also celebrate Christmas here, but there are two uh, large things, and uh, many people order uh, things uh, for that. So one day before uh, that happened, this went live. Um, we're never going to do something like that again, but uh, uh, it just shows it goes to show uh, if you want to, you can. Uh, do it and see what happens. Uh, uh, I uh, very like, much like uh, that idea. Um, what, in what was interesting is on December 6th, after the holiday, people wanted to return items and there was no content for that. Um, but uh, uh, still, uh, uh, there were a thousand chats of day and uh, uh, I see I forgot uh, what the automatic translation didn't uh, take this off, but uh, on the 26th of December at Christmas, there was another, uh, how do you say it, uh, fire drill. See, uh, is it possible to uh, actually survive this? So two learnings. Chat is easily accessible. People are going to talk about everything um, because uh, they wanted to return items. <laughs> Never prepared for that, uh, but it's an open field. People are going to say everything that they want. So you have to prepare for that. And starting small works. Um, just uh, go for it. 
So the way we did it then, we'll never do it again. Uh, that's uh, what uh, the people back then said. Then uh, in 2009, Windows Live Messenger, we tried uh, some stuff on that, mostly for marketing, but it no longer exists. And why? Uh, it wasn't a success because uh, it was two different part, uh, departments working on it. So you had marketing and uh, there's customer service, but uh, it wasn't uh, uh, the same type of content. So on uh, Windows Live Messenger, you had uh, sales, um, uh, but uh, customer service, you only had customer service. So you had two different departments, but it was still the same customer, meaning that we got the wrong questions on the wrong place. So that's uh, something uh, to learn from. Please remember, anything you interact with is always the same customer. Then 2010 and forwards are golden years. Uh, we had positive noises in the media. Uh, so many articles written about uh, our chatbot, which was beautiful, um, where people said Billy really makes a difference. Uh, there was a lot about Billy's humor and we had an example function apparently for other companies because other companies started copying the way we did things, uh, which was fascinating. Uh, but it also uh, was something that we learned from because uh, here's the learning, external feedback helps assess success, uh, which is, uh, uh, yeah, we, we didn't always feel it on our own uh, internally, but looking outwards and hearing from others, that really helped. Um, and what uh, also made things a lot easier is uh, we had a young and digital savvy audience because we're a web shop, um, we had a higher adoption rate. So, um, in regards to our external partner, Life Presence, back at the time, what did we learn? Good cooperation uh, was uh, important. So the customer was always central. Uh, you always had the option to escalate to a person. Uh, we noticed that at uh, the external partner, we weren't just a number. They were actually interacting and talking uh, to us, and we're very happy with that. Uh, so that's uh, something that we learned and decided, okay, we're continuing with that, with uh, 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 our uh, uh, interaction with Chatlayer. That's uh, what we're looking for. Um, we were looking for, they were very flexible and were thinking along with us, and that's also what we know right now, and uh, they focused on the highest quality, um, meaning that in all of this, numbers weren't everything. Um, of course, uh, they could show, uh, uh, yes, everything's going really well, and here's your resolution rate, and uh, those are great numbers, uh, but um, uh, yeah, it, it's not what uh, 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 in the long term helped uh, keep the relationship central and our chatbot life in that sense. Um, because uh, we also noticed that we could really grow together with this and uh, we both had to focus on the customer. There were some rituals, weekly meetings, reports, each milestone was celebrated with cake and we discussed and challenged the uh, uh, cases. Uh, so uh, every week uh, try a new uh, thing. So celebrate with cake, big learning, and stay in conversation about the customer because every time we just uh, try to, a new subject, a new topic and see uh, how does that go? Um, just to really understand and challenge ourselves and making something good. Then 2015, we were stuck uh, a bit because uh, uh, except for content updates, there were no developments. We had seven years of Billy at that time, which is a very rare thing within Bolton that a service exists that long. And we were thinking, are we just innovating to innovate or what, what is happening? So uh, uh, we had to, to get ourselves out of that. So uh, keep challenging uh, yourself was a learning uh, in there um, instead of saying, seeing, oh, everything's going right, good feedback, and then what? Um, in 2016, there came an email. Um, because of the time, I won't read all of it uh, out. But this was an email by uh, one of the managers back then, a new manager. Uh, he said, uh, uh, for Billy, uh, I'm actually not that positive because it remains impersonal. And if Billy can't help, he can't score anyway. Uh, can't we just turn it off for a week based on an A-B test to see what happens? So it was almost the death of Billy. So uh, what were the saving graces? My new manager, Elmer, who uh, just came from another company called Zico, where he killed chatbot Tess, um, but uh, then came to here uh, to us uh, and then was manager of uh, uh, our new chatbot. So Fabian from the externals company, he saved the day. He could really show, but these are the numbers and this is what it's going to cost you um, if you uh, remove it. And this is what is happening to the, the customers. So that was amazing. So what were the two learnings? Provide a strong story and back it up with numbers because instantly the idea of killing uh, Billy was uh, a shut down because the story was just really good and we could tr truly show um, how well things were going. Um, and everyone in the team could do that. So even today, Every time I try to uh, have my team be able 
to um, uh, tell our story and back that up with numbers if necessary. Exactly, how are we helping people? How does it? What does it look like? What if we would uh, remove it? Because uh, I can already tell you, um, if we were to do that, there aren't enough people that we can hire to take over the work that our chatbot does these days. Um, there was another rescue. Customer service began to change, and this is uh, a little bit uh, in relation to what I just said, because uh, in this time, uh, uh, in these years, uh, the idea was, especially with the customer service everywhere in the industry, the idea was to spend two minutes per customer and then uh, call it uh, uh, then, and stop it, and that's the end of the call. We didn't want that. We wanted everyone to uh, be able to talk uh, to our customers for as long as needed to really solve the problem. Um, and uh, we didn't want those two minutes per customer. Uh, so uh, how could we solve that? Well, we could keep our chatbot, meaning that uh, we could have our uh, service agents spend more time on the customer. And still to this day, uh, if you want to talk to one of our service uh, agents for half an hour or an hour or whatever is needed, it's possible because we tried to solve it in one go. And it's only possible because of chatbot. So we enabled a new business case uh, that way. Um, and uh, 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 what we've always done is we always call our detractors. So if someone uh, uh, um, said, uh, uh, yeah, I score you uh, quite low in the NPS. Uh, if you're familiar with NPS, it's a way uh, to measure how things are going and customer satisfaction. Um, so uh, uh, we always call people, see what can we improve uh, and what can we do better? And uh, that all fed back uh, into our chatbot. And the new business case was born and we uh, could stay away from those two minutes per customer. Uh, and that's what our chatbot enabled. Then 2017, the AI hype started. More cool things came up with empathy and difficult customer questions. My manager, Elmer, went to South by Southwest. Uh, public opinion started demanding more AI uh, hype and budgets were suddenly available to improve things. So uh, we could get out of uh, the place that we were stuck in with our chatbot and uh, improve things because uh, the trend uh, uh, combined, the trend in AI and the trend in customer service uh, really uh, changed the landscape, uh, meaning that we could uh, start uh, uh, investing in our chatbot a lot more, which was amazing. But there was another group of people that we didn't, um, that, that we had to, to listen to that uh, uh, were important because, uh, as I said, there was a black box of one line of JavaScript. Our developers didn't really like that, security didn't like it. Uh, so we tried to uh, experiment and the uh, data analysts started doing that. Uh, we tried to build machine learning in-house. We had self-built bots. We had more insights. We were more critical of the product. Uh, we do a lot of uh, stuff in-house. And from that point, we learned, hey, a lot of data makes it a breeze because we already had um, uh, lots of data from our previous uh, uh, chatbot experiences. Um, uh, customer service had a lot of data. Um, and uh, from this point, it also made it a lot more fun for developers and security. So two things, a lot of data makes it degrees. And don't forget about the other roles within the organization, because until this point, they had over a decade where they were not involved in the chatbot and they were not pleased from a security and developer standpoint. They could basically do nothing. And um, that just didn't fit with uh, the way that we as a, as a company work, because um, we're an uh, a web shop everyone here is tech savvy uh we can do awesome things so uh from this point on even though we had awesome uh, uh reviews and great uh, attention in the media and very happy customers as well we noticed hey this is uh becoming a problem within our organization and there were more challenges because we uh started as a web shop where we do, were the only seller um and nowadays we are a platform uh similar to uh, amazon if you are uh, familiar with that uh, currently, we have 50,000 sellers since this summer, uh, which is uh, amazing. But it means we're not just the only seller. We need to have way more customer service now. Uh, and that means we have to forward as well to the right party because uh, there are so many options to uh, um, uh, have uh, uh, your uh, store on our platform. Uh, we, for example, everything finance, we do that. But when it comes to um, a warranty, perhaps the partner uh, needs to be contacted for that. Um, and then uh, if you are uh, sending something, it could be in our warehouses, you might be using our contracts, uh, we might pick it up at uh, your place. Um, it's also possible that um, uh, uh, you send it yourself. There are all kinds of ways. So who do you have to talk to? 
it's a very important uh, thing that uh, uh, we have to solve with customer service and uh, we also have to make sure that works uh, uh, through Billy. Um, and then a couple of years ago, we also started, uh, well, actually quite many, a lot of years ago, we started in Belgium, but only recently with Bill, Billy in Belgium. So French speaker needed to be included. And uh, because we had a chatbot that was so uh, uh, well established, our improvements were only between zero and 1%. So um, all of these challenges meant we needed to scale and scale a lot more. Um, and uh, uh, if you have a chatbot that's uh, that old, it becomes uh, rather difficult. So stay scalable, big learning. Uh, and we've changed as a company, way more people uh, with opinions and demands, highly experienced software engineers, data scientists, analysts, security operations, CS experts, etc. Our company is not the 26 people anymore that it started with. It's a lot more. So our current setup of uh, collaborating with a full service provider like Life Presence is difficult, and that's why we started looking for something else. Um, even though Life Presence has made it the success that it is today, uh, but it just doesn't fit uh, us uh, as a company anymore. So 2019. Um, from a marketing perspective, uh, we had too much Billy. Almost every page uh, there was a Billy the mascot. Uh, so in 2019, we decided we do some rebranding and we're not putting Billy on every page anymore. So there was a challenge because uh, should it still stay at customer service? Absolutely, uh, we kept it here. So 2021, what happened there? Uh, we take, we're take we taking the biggest gamble since uh, Billy's existence. Uh, we're going to try more ourselves tackling all challenges, building Billy for the next 14 years in which it's scalable. I see the translation didn't go properly here, apologies. Um, it has to be technically strong, easy to maintain, uh, keep up with ever increasing customer demands. We have to surpass ourselves in customer experience, which is a challenge because uh, lots of other companies look at us to copy us and uh, we don't have that many others to copy from. So we really want to innovate and it's without the most stable factor that we had all the time, life presence, because we're doing it ourselves. Um, but uh, we took all of these learnings and in 2022, we decided to set up for the future um, with our new engine, Chatlayer, and we're building a car around it uh, ourselves. Um, as a company, uh, to give you a little bit insight of how are we doing that, uh, we're following what I call the Pixar model, uh, meaning that um, we have uh, one group of people um, focused on the content and one group of people on the technology. Um, and that's how Pixar started one day uh, as well. They split up the company in two parts and one part, uh, uh, for example, focuses on only making the light and how the light falls in the water in Finding Nemo. And another part is the actual artists that try to fill it in. Um, so uh, within uh, our organization, our team is split that way as well. And we try to make uh, amazing tools for our conversation designers to uh, build the most beautiful conversations without having to think too much about how everything works because we just make it work for them. For that, we also uh, have to invent new metrics. We have to invent all kinds of way of how, what should conversations look like. And uh, chat layer is uh, uh, a very strong basis of that. And uh, they are part of the, actually the tech side of uh, our Pixar model actually. So uh, I'm very pleased with that. Uh, regarding our presence, uh, we're still working together, but they're they're doing uh, smaller bots for us. Uh, and when it comes to the real good stuff, uh, we're working with the chat layer. Uh, we're also uh, working with researchers from universities. Uh, we're making our chatbot available to the whole organization uh, uh, in the sense that if something goes wrong, every part of our organization can instantly uh, have a dashboard created where our chatbot tells you exactly what went wrong, where it went wrong, and show you data and example conversations. Uh, for that, we are uh, creating our prototype Billy, or proto Billy as I call it. Uh, Billy is part of the design principles of the whole organization, and we take uh, all of the learnings with us. Um, so to summarize all of the learnings in one go with energetic Congress music, as I like to call it. First of all, choose a recognizable point of contact as an avatar. And for us, Billy already existed. Find a partner that suits you, that really listens and talks to you. Um, chat is easily accessible. People are going to talk about everything. Um, so keep that in mind. Start in small. It works. Just do it. And you will see where uh, the things you are missing are. Um, if you have two different departments working on chatbot, it's still the same customer. Keep that in mind. Um, sometimes you uh, are blind. External feedback helps you assess that success. 
uh, but uh, don't forget numbers aren't everything it's all about the customer and the story um, which if it's so successfully you have to celebrate with cake that's the biggest learning and my favorite one um, stay in conversation about the customer as well uh, try to see the situations talk to your customer uh, and it helps you provide a very strong story. So whenever someone uh, challenges you, you can uh, tell that story and you can back it up with numbers. Um, it uh, could enable new business cases for you. So keep that in mind, things that previously weren't possible. Uh, sometimes uh, you can uh, go onto a trend. It might help you uh, obtain more budget. Um, if you uh, want to make things easier, collect data. It's customer service. You probably have all the data that you need. Um, but uh, don't forget the rest of your organization. Everyone needs to like it. And don't forget the future, because at the end, you have to stay scalable. Um, so learn from your past, set up your team and chatbot for the future. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much for your attention. Wow, what a journey of Billy and <laughs> Paul.com, Yannick. Thanks a lot for sharing those learnings. Very insightful. Um, we have quite time for um there's several questions uh for you yannick uh, are you ready <laughs> yes perfect so karen verma says in your experience do users actually want or need personalized multi-turn dialogues or do they just need transactional quick conversations oh that is an interesting question um so it really depends on the use case i have noticed so, for example, in the past, um, uh, I worked uh, as a consultant for an insurer uh, in a process where people just wanted to get things done very quickly. Uh, they didn't want to think too much about it. So if you had a chatbot interaction for the uh, insurance part, they said they understood it way better. And finally, they understood what is actually in their insurance and what they had. But they also just wanted to get it over with. Um, so in that case, a wizard is more effective than a chatbot. And um, if there's no dialogue, I personally wouldn't call it a chatbot at all. That's just a, a wizard. Um, so it really depends on the situation that you are in. Um, but also remember that if you create a wizard and everyone goes through it and it seems successful, you're probably not receiving the feedback that you expect. And if you have a chatbot, you will get all the feedback. Yeah, agree, agree on that. Also from Ka uh, Karen Verma, she said, she asked, um, would Billy have survived without the AI hype, except maybe better intent recognition? Uh, that is a very good question. Um, I cannot possibly answer that because there were so many things happening at the same time back then, also with the change in customer service and how we wanted to approach that. Um, I would have said it would have become very difficult because costu customer demands, consumer demands uh, have become way more complicated and way more difficult uh, than uh, it was 40 years ago. Mm. Um, so in that sense, um, the AI hype, I don't know if it was, uh, uh, if, if we could have uh, avoided it, uh, it was just uh, bound to happen. So we would have needed to find a solution anyhow to have better recognition and better interactions, yeah. Okay. But it did help then, with the budgets. <laughs> um, Marinella Potter asks, other than improving customer service quality and freeing up time for your agents, what advantages do you see in implementing Billy? Ooh, um, what advantages don't I see? This, uh, I'll try to keep it very short because this is, uh, this uh, here I can go on for hours uh, on this. Um, okay, so uh, 20, as a customer, uh, from that perspective, uh, it means that I have 24 serv uh, seven service and uh, whatever I need and want. Uh, we've also seen that uh, um, if we um, escalate faster or uh, remove the option for Billy, our customers nowadays are actually uh, annoyed uh, because they don't always want to talk to a person, which is my ideal customer as a chatbot PO. Um, but uh, people really choose for this. Uh, so that's one thing. And the other thing is a very practical thing that uh, I'd like to highlight. There's a lot more, but this is just a highlight. If something goes wrong in your custom, on your, uh, in your customer service center, uh, you might have uh, uh, yeah, a couple of hundred of uh, people that do your customer service. Um, and uh, if something goes wrong, maybe it goes wrong once for everyone. And if you then go on the floor and you ask, hey, did something weird happen? 
No, no, it's just a regular day. But for all of those hundred people, one thing went wrong and it might be something like the payments or whatever. So it's also a beautiful early warning detection uh, that you just don't notice. Here you have one super employee that can tell you exactly when and where something is happening. Um, and uh, it's, uh, as I said before, people give you feedback. And here you have one central place where that all comes in. So do something with it. Uh, and you can solve their problem if you need to, but it's also amazing data. And now that you mentioned about the feedback, another question would be, what's actually the customer's feedback about Billy? Like, have you have you measured that at some point? And tell us more about that. Yeah, we do that continuously, uh, every day, all the time. Um, and uh, the feedback usually is uh, that uh, Billy is very polite, uh, helpful, uh, um, uh, available. Um, it's not too difficult to get a customer service uh, agent if you need it. Uh, what we also noticed, and this is because we work at quite uh, a large scale, um, is that um, uh, the customer uh, wishes have changed. So 14 years ago, yes, we could go live uh, on the brink of a massive holiday um, and uh, people would accept it. Uh, but nowadays the, uh, uh, the, the wishes are so different that, um, uh, well, uh, I believe uh, the, the, the product teams at Chatlayer uh, are very well aware of uh, all the things that I keep asking uh, uh, for every day because uh, we uh, try to innovate more and more and more and uh, really try to get to that point that, uh, uh, yeah, if you interact with it, you just think this is amazing or uh, super comfortable and yes, you did solve my problem and I love it. Um, uh, so at that point, so to give you a little bit of uh, an idea of what do we do, when we write our conversations uh, and set up our conversations, we don't stop until we can physically see a smile on the people that are writing it. Wow. <laughs> so the, uh, just a little bit of context of how much customer uh, demand has changed and how we need to, uh, to match that. Because if we're already doing really well, um, I said before, zero to 1% uh, improvements uh, currently, we need to do crazy things to get out of that zero to 1% and get to 10, 20, 30% improvements. Yeah, well, um, great. Thanks for answering that. Um, great. Um, we have time for another um, question. This is from Dennis Korn. Thanks for sharing this great story. What's the thing you weren't able to improve yet? What is still on your wish list? Ooh, that <laughs> is an interesting question. There's a lot on my wish list. Um, let me quickly think about which one I'd like to mention most. Uh, so one thing that we are in big preparations for, which isn't live yet, um, is uh, that uh, we are not going to be sure what Billy is going to say, even though we designed it ourselves. Because it's completely dependent on what you said in the conversation and what the things are that you're doing. So really the point that um, uh, you feel like this is super personal and you are actually responding to me as a human, uh, that sense. So um, uh, that's, uh, we're, we're yeah, trying to, to live up to that and create that. Um, and we already have the, I can already say that we have the basis for that already created. Uh, and now the, the, the next part is uh, to realize that at scale. I can tell you, if you have 14 years of content, that's not easy to do. So this is gonna take a couple of years before uh, we're there, but uh, I, uh, yeah, I am so very excited for that. Amazing. Yannick, thanks a lot. Thank you very, very much for your time, for your presentation, for sharing your, your learnings and your experience through all these years of uh, building Billy and, um, and implementing, obviously, a, a bot for, for, for your um, business. So thanks again. And I hope to see you back in the, in the after party open uh, networking session at five o'clock. I'll do my best. And uh, if uh, you can't find me there, please uh, find me on LinkedIn. Uh, here's my name. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't know either, but yes, yeah. we will share all the information all the information yeah. with the uh, with the audience. Thanks a lot, Yannick. Yeah. Yeah. Have a great You're evening. Welcome. Cheers, Bye. have fun. Have a great day. Thanks. Awesome. Now we're going to have a 10 minute break because our next session is going to start at 345. This session is with Calzapato, a Mexican online store for shoes that they, they're going to tell us how to reach the leverage uh, or how to leverage their marketing through WhatsApp. I'm actually curious to know how. So see you back at 345.